Hi everyone, uh, Lisa here, aka Maggie Milo. Um, I'm here to share another scrapbook protest video today, and this is using the Studio Calico kit for April called Spencer's. And I know it's from the April kit, and we're almost at the end of May, and I haven't even touched my May uh, Studio Calico kit yet. Um, ever since my surgery, I've been really behind on catching up with my Studio Calico kits, which I kind of knew was going to happen anyway. Uh, but I just didn't realize how quickly I would get behind. And my project life, we're not even going to talk about because I'm really behind in that. So anyway, uh, back to the kit here. Um, I'm cutting out some of this um, paper and it's from, I think it is uh, Echo Park. And the background is like a wood grain arrow print. But I wanted to keep this layout kind of a monotone, kind of um, a monochromatic look to it. Um, there were, I had a lot of pattern paper that was um, lightish blue in tint. Um, and I kind of wanted to, you know, keep that uh, lightness, well, not lightness about it because it ends up to be a very heavy layout, but um, I just wanted to keep those colors kind of on a, on a one level palette. Um, the only darker tone right now is the navy cardstock in the background. Um, all of the other papers are going to be a lighter tone, and I am going to bring some of uh, the cork pattern paper in, but that'll be at a later time. Um, I took that uh, diamond shape um, uh, pattern paper, and I cut it kind of like on a zigzag pattern. I just wanted to add a little bit of, uh, you know, interest to the page, and um, then I'm taking the hexagon vellum and, uh, you know, I'm going to use that as an, as a piece of pattern, as a piece of pattern paper. Um, I found when you start to use vellum, I had a hard time using it at first and I'm getting a little better with it right now, kind of getting over, um, my little slump with it. But, um, as for how I'm using it this time, um, I found when I put the vellum on top of this navy cardstock, it really kind of pops that pattern out, and I wanted that pattern to kind of be a little bit more of an element rather than it kind of muting everything down. I wanted it to kind of stand off on its own, and so that's why I'm kind of using it, you know, more or less as a background paper. Um, so you can kind of see me, you know, fussing around with uh, some of the, you know, layering and, uh, you know, piecing of uh, of the layout here. Uh, I just kind of, I knew I want something up at the top and I knew I wanted some of that um, kind of blue pattern paper uh, that the photo mat sits on. I wanted some of that to be up at the top of the layout. So I cut a strip of that off and then I'm going to cut a strip of this alphabet paper and I'm going to lay that up on the top. And at first I have it so that the alphabet print is up so that it would kind of like keep, um, you know, a tone on tone feel going, but eventually I'll just flip that over and get to the cork side. And I really like that look a lot better, but we'll see that in a second. So you can see I've added a little bit of cork paper to the layers as well. Um, I tried using this arrow print, but this arrow print and I, um, uh, I don't think we got along very well this go around. Um, I did use it in a couple other layouts and I really liked how they turned out. Uh, but in this particular layout, it was just a little bit too dramatic uh, for what I was going for. So I don't end up using it, and I actually end up, um, I think that last little bit of cardstock or from that pattern paper is what I have left. I don't, I haven't used it any on any other layouts. Um, so this layout, uh, I should mention, I'm part of the 50 Projects uh, Facebook group. Uh, and Nicole Jones 911 is also part of this group. Um, if you're interested, go check it out. Now, what it is, is you have to create 50 projects, whether it's um, cards or whether it's layouts or project life spreads or whatever. But 
you do 50 projects before you can buy anything else. So this layout is part of that, and this would be, I believe, layout 23 of 50. I have posted other um, pages onto this Facebook page, but I haven't you know, done any process videos on them. Um, some of them were for National Scrapbook Day, and some of them are my project life spreads. Um, so, you know, I, uh, I just kind of keep posting them on there and I don't necessarily do videos of everything that I do. I do like to do the studio calico kit so that you guys can see what I do with the kit. Um, just to kind of jump off track here a little bit, but this mask here I got from Sandra in Iraq not that long ago, and it's a star mask uh, from Studio Calico, and I'm just going to spray that along, and all I'm doing is just kind of um, blocking off everything else so that I don't get missed anywhere else, um, so that it can kind of keep it in a block pattern. So anyway, um, the 50 Projects Facebook page is a group of some really amazing ladies. Uh, you know, maybe not all of them do uh, YouTube, but uh, they do post their videos on there. And some of the pages that are on there are simply amazing. Uh, these ladies are so wonderful and such a great group of gals. Um, I've had lots of fun being part of that group. Uh, so if you're interested, I'm going to put the link below. Um, join if you're interested and um, it's more or less one of those things where it's honor based so that you know um, you know they they do a lot you to buy for adhesive and page pro protectors and stuff like that and there's no 50 projects cops out there that are gonna arrest you if you go on and buy something it's just kind of one of those honor system things and um, I've done so much more with my pages because I know I can't buy anything uh, that I really dive into my stash just to kind of, um, you know, try new techniques with some of the products that I have or some of the stuff that I've had sitting around for a while. I'm like, hmm, you know, I gotta make do with what I've got. And I've really enjoyed the challenge. Um, so again, I'm on 23 of 50 and it's been so much fun. Um, again, if you're interested, check them out. It's it's been pretty fun. I guess I can't say that too much. <laughs> uh, so here I you can see I took that viewfinder and I have that kind of as a layer on that right side of the photo, but it's going to get moved over to the left and actually it's going to get cut in half so that I can kind of spread it out over uh, the layout. Um, and here I'm taking some of these speech bubbles that we got in the kit and I'm just going to make some layering with those speech bubbles to uh, add a little bit more of an accent up on the top part of the page. And you're going to see me switch them out for um, different sizes just to kind of see if that's the way I wanted to go. And really, you know, I'm the type of person where if I like it, I should just leave it um, because... I move it around and I eventually just go back to the way I liked it in the first place. So I should just just know that I should just leave things alone and just work with what I like rather than fussing too much. So you can kind of see me uh, now that I've moved that viewfinder over to the one part of the page. I'm going to cut it in half and then um, just put it at the bottom of the spread there. And um, if you, I don't know if you have these before, but uh, they have like a little plastic coating on top, or like a little plastic film piece on top of uh, these pieces. And uh, you actually, if you want it to be a little bit on the shinier side, uh, you can peel it off and it, you know, it, it's just so that they don't get scratched up in the shipping. It's kind of like, um, the acetate that you get uh, for making, you know, uh, scrapbook pages or whatever. Um, they have that protective film over top of it so that they don't get all scratched. Uh, same thing with these. Um, and you could leave it on if you want, but I just found that uh, they were peeling up anyway. And if I left it the way it was, they kind of looked, uh, well, they looked like they had that plastic film over top, so it was better off if I just peeled it off and, and dealt with it. If you leave it on, it gives it a little bit more of a matted finish um, than a shinier finish. But again, I just I couldn't leave it on. Um, you could definitely tell that there was a film over top of it. 
So here I'm taking each of these uh, pattern pieces and I'm um, outlining them in black and I think I'm using a 0 0.05. I wanted a little bit of a broader um, black stripe on them or outline or whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to use a 0 0.05 and just quickly um, go around everything with the black pen. And I don't do the bottom of that or the top part of that zigzag just because uh, it's going to be covered up by the pattern paper. And because there was the vellum on the background, I didn't want to put glue all over it. So I'm going to start by attaching everything um, underneath the bottom of my photo first. Uh, that way, you know, I can kind of get an idea of where I need to put uh, the glue on the vellum um, just to make sure that um, no, no adhesive shows through the vellum. I am talking really weird today and I'm sorry. It, I don't know what is wrong with me. I just can't talk properly. Uh, I don't know if maybe I didn't get enough sleep last night or if I'm just tired, but I am sorry. I just, my words are not great today. <laughs> So sorry if I'm rambling or stumbling along here. It's just been a really, really long week. Um, so here I'm just kind of attaching everything down to that vellum piece. And I wanted uh, that letter paper to kind of bridge the gap between the mask and um, the photo because there was kind of a little bit of a harsh line uh, with the way the mask was sprayed. So if I put the uh, pattern paper along that line, it kind of gave it a little bit of a bridge uh, between the two pieces. And uh, here I'm just attaching some of those little strips up to the top. And you can see what I mean by adding that brown paper, um, you know, up at the top. Rather than making it the blue, it kind of gave it a little bit of a grounding effect. Um, so to speak, it gave it a bit of a header, I guess. It's not really a grounding uh, piece, but it gives it a bit of a header. So someplace else for your eye to lie on on the page. So um, I really think that uh, that this page definitely needed something like that. So here I'm going to try and figure out what to do for my title. And I really was kind of lost with the small alphas that we got in the kit. Um, they were way too small. I was, I've been using them in my project life just because they're way too small for me to make a proper um, title with. I sometimes like to have a bigger title um, just to have it a little bit more pronounced on the page. I, I could see using a smaller title if you are trying to get a little bit more of a dramatic effect. Um, and vice versa. You could do that with a bigger title as well, but um, I generally like to have um, some of my titles stand out from each other, so uh, yeah, I wasn't too happy with the two small alphas. It would have been nice to have a big alpha and a small alpha, I guess is what I'm saying. So here my title is going to be Photobomb, and I took these thickers and they're called flaky, I believe. And I'm going to spell out bomb just because I wanted some sort of funky red pattern in the bottom of the title. And the reason why I chose red is there's a red arrow on that um, uh, little uh, Instagram picture frame kind of thing. Ah, uh, you know, like the photo piece there. <laughs> I can't talk today. Ah. Uh, I should probably not be doing this video is what I'm thinking right now. Anyway, uh, they uh, there's that red arrow on that piece and uh, I wanted to bring a little bit more of that red out. So uh, that's why I chose the red um, in the title. Um, I just needed a pop of something else. There was a lot of uh, blues going on and it just needed a little bit more of uh, some dramatic coloring. And uh, this photo, my son and I were, tr I was trying to get a picture of my son and I when we were out in Manitoba visiting my sister and her family. 
and uh, we were just, you know, taking random pictures of each other, and we were smiling and stuff like that. And my sister stuck her head in uh, the frame and took this pic, and we, we ended up snapping this picture. So it's quite hilarious. I like it. It's funny. So that would be where the photo bomb came in. And then I'm going to go to these uh, camera quirk stickers and just kind of going to use those as uh, some layering. I just needed something else. There was a bit of a gap between um, that bomb and the photo, uh, you know, the word photo and then the photo frame. Um, there was just a bit of a a weird gap. Uh, so, of course, I wanted to fill it up with something in a camera kind of seemed to be perfect, uh, you know, for the photo bomb, so to speak, um, title. So that's why I chose that. And then here I'm just trimming off that top speech bubble piece. And I'm going to pull a camera in and I'm going to um, put that down on that layer. But um, I'm just put it lightly down because I knew I wanted to add something else into that top cluster there so I just placed it lightly down and you can see I'm looking at those uh, little small um, stickers that we got from Studio Calico but they just it was just a little too much blue we needed something else at this point to just kind of carry everything over and uh, that little tag is from the kit and it's from Basic Gray. I think it's called hey, the Hey You stickers. And it says so much awesomeness, which would be perfect for this title. So that's why I chose that. And I just layered it over top of that camera. I like I like that effect. Usually I stick the stickers underneath uh, some of these wood veneers and embellishments. And I like the idea of putting a sticker over top. It kind of added a little bit uh, of a different effect of layering. I think I'll probably do that again. And then I use another sticker that has date on it. And then I want to use this one that's a speech bubble that says, hey, I just felt that that would bring in another speech bubble element in, uh, but I'm not quite ready for that yet. And then you can see I did some journaling in um, that little square, and it's a little hard to read, and sometimes I'm okay with that. Um, you know, if somebody really wants to read it, they can, uh, but I'm not going to sweat too much over the fact that it's a little bit harder to read. Um, if I really wanted to, I could probably cut a white piece out um, and fill in that piece and, and do the journaling over top. But I felt that would kind of lose a little bit of something for the layout. Uh, I'm, I'm okay with how that is. So, you know, I'm just going to leave it. And here I'm just going to more stickers and trying to figure out which one I want to use. And that one in the bottom right says good day. And I'm going to put a camera above that. And I know this is awkward and I, I can see it, but I just didn't know how to fix it at this right time. Um, but I put a, this cork camera over top of the cork paper. And I know it's difficult to read at this point, but I'm just going to leave it and just kind of uh, figure out which way I want to take um, to put layering underneath that camera just so that it's not fading into the background and here I'm just trying to find a sticker that'll work with that hey oh and here I'm going to attach that good day um, sticker down and I'm going to attach this hey you one down as well just because I know that's for sure where I want them to go and then I looked at the sticker sheet again, and then there was this hand uh, that was pointing, you know, kind of in towards my journaling, which I figured would be perfect to kind of draw your eye in, especially with that arrow at the bottom. Um, so I just kind of made uh, a flag piece on its own and, uh, you know, just trimmed the little tails to make it have a little bit of a different uh, look than rather it being too square. And I pulled out, these are actually, I think, from the Project Life kit for May. And they're the hipster, kind of like vellum pieces. Um, but I just 
didn't want to add too much red. I just wanted a little pop of red. Because um, to me, red is one of those things that can really get out of control really quickly, especially if you're just using it as an accent color. Um, so I just wanted pops of red, so I put those away. I didn't want to get too carried away with it. So I just attached those few binder pieces because they weren't attached down. And these are some stickers from the O Snap collection. And I layered the camera on top of it. And that is kind of what I was looking for, something to anchor that camera down to the page. I just didn't want to have that camera floating back on to that cork pattern paper. It was just getting really, really lost. So I stamped the date on that little orange tab, and here I was debating on um, putting this little tab piece underneath that, but it just didn't work. So I'm just going to put the stickers away for right now. And then there was some of these asterisks on these flaky font uh, thickers, so I decided I would use those to add a little bit more of a red accent. Uh, to these clusters and I like that. So I think we're getting close for the close-ups here. Yeah, so here we're going to start coming in in a second now. Here we go. So you can kind of see that journaling does get a little lost in the background but I'm okay with that. If they really want to read it they can they can still read it. You just have to get a little closer. And there's the clustering on the left side of the page and my funny sister in the photo. And then there's the clustering on the top. So here's the, the pictures and thanks everybody for watching. Bye.